Also join us on this platform and on the YouTube channel platform called Covenant in Your Altar. But then uh, today we would like to continue our Bible study with this, the book of Second Thessalonians, chapter number two. Today we, were, we will be studying verse number ten up to twelve. By the grace of God, we believe that uh, God will help us understand this word even to deeper levels and that he will give us more wisdom and insight in the name of Jesus. Before we start off our Bible study this evening, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor, glory, praise, majesty, and adoration belong to you. We give unto you, my Father, praise and worship, because you are the Lord. We surrender to you, Lord, and we repent of every iniquity, every sin, that would make us not to dine with you, Jehovah God, with a joy to dine with you, my Father, on your table. We surrender to you, Lord. As a vessel, I submit myself to your presence, to your grace, and to your direction. I pray for them that are listening and watching from wherever they are, that this word may bring transformation in their lives, in the name of Jesus. I pray that, Lord, you may saturate us with your anointing, with your word, with your power, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit help us in understanding and interpreting this word in the name of jesus we bless you lord and we worship you for you are the lord god almighty in jesus name we pray amen amen so the book of second thessalonians the second letter to the thessalonians by apostle paul uh, to the church in macedonia called thessalonica that's the letter that we've been studying and we studied up to verse number nine of of chapter two Today we will continue with verse number 10, 11, and 12. Those three verses. Now, uh, for the purposes of uh, marrying the verses and putting them in context, uh, especially for the sake of them that were not with us in the last session, which is also on this platform and on YouTube, but for the purposes of them that are just joining us, I'll read from verse number 9 so that we may be able to marry that verse number 9 with 10, 11, and 12 as we continue, because it's a continuation of what Paul was talking about, the lawless man, the man of destruction, the antichrist, the man destined for destruction. Verse number 9, the Bible says, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with, the, with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power, through signs and wonders that serve the lie. Verse number 10. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. 
and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. I repeat from verse number 9. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders. Uh, that's another uh, version. Verse number 10. And in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Apostle Paul continues talking about the lawless man, the one we refer to as the Antichrist. And we saw this at length when, uh, we, when we were doing uh, the, the preceding verses. We saw even the way Daniel had referred to this Antichrist, this lawless man, the man destined for destruction. We also saw how Jesus Christ talked about him, the false prophet. We also saw how John the Revelator uh, gives his testimony in the book of Revelations. And so today we will just continue. But then uh, something uh, worth remembering is that this, uh, this lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. That means uh, in the great tribulation, Satan will be dispensing his wickedness, his deception, his lies through this lawless man at a higher level. Though, as we had seen, that these times uh, that, that, that uh, in the dispensation that we are living in, already there are works of this lawless man that are being seen, but these are being done as secret works, as you will see in verse number seven, that for the secret power of the lawlessness is already at work. So even as we are talking, those signs are there. Those uh, works of Satan are there. Those are the, the growing of uh, the growing cold of the love uh, in many is there. We are seeing where people are slaughtering one another, where people are doing things that are inhuman. They are, being, they are under the control of the lawless one. They are under the control of him who wants to deceive people, including targeting the elect so that they may perish together with him. With him. Uh, because uh, he was meant for abyss. He was meant for... Uh, 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 Hell, he was meant for destruction together with the angels, his angels of darkness. And so he's looking for as many as possible. That's why he's doing his works. That's why he's doing his counterfeit miracles. That's why he's doing signs and wonders. And so now uh, uh, the purpose is to serve his lie, to make sure that the foundation he has put, the foundation of lies and deception, are holding together what he's engineering, he are holding together deceiving people, enticing people, so that people may come to his side. People may refuse salvation. People may refuse the truth. People may refuse to be saved. That is his intention at the moment, and he's working even at the moment. However, it is going to be greater during the Great Tribulation where God will have permitted now uh, uh, this Antichrist, the lawless man, to take charge. God will allow him. Praise the Lord. And we saw that it is God who will allow him because it is God who is the creator of everything. And so uh, the, the devil cannot do anything just as free will. And this we see from Job's experience when uh, Satan was not able to do anything against Job until he asked for permission, and God granted him permission. This time round, uh, uh, God will allow him for some period so that he may do destruction. Uh, he, may, he may try to, uh, to, to make many perish. And so in verse number 10, the Bible says, and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refused 
to love the truth and so uh, be saved. And so, as we are seeing in verse number 9, joining with verse number 10, in the lies and deception, the, uh, the Antichrist, the lawless man, will give a spectacular show, a spectacular manifestation. Uh, just as creation is waiting for the uh, manifestation of the sons of God, so is uh, this lawless man is also waiting for his time to manifest and manifest seriously to, to, to pour wickedness, to pour deception and lies in a bid to win as many as possible. And that's why as a Christian you are told, you, you are told and taught that you shouldn't wait for the great tribulation. Instead, you should be ready uh, uh, when Christ raptures his church so that you are raptured not to experience the peak of the great tribulation. Praise the Lord. And uh, because uh, this is what the lawless man is waiting to manifest, where he will force all to, uh, to worship him, and he will despise anything that is of God. Yet, remembering it is God who will have given him that permission. It is God who will have given him that leeway. And so, the lawless man, this enemy of Christ, the Antichrist, he knows one thing. He knows that human beings are yearning for physical manifestations to see with their eyes. They are yearning to see things happen. Miracles happen. Everybody's yearning. Go where miracles are happening. Go where magic is being done, even by human beings. People will crowd there. People will go there. They will pay anything so that they can witness and even partake of it. This is the secret that, no, that the Antichrist, the lawless man, understands, as Paul uh, is putting it very clearly. He understands that people are hungry for signs and wonders. People are hungry for manifestations, physical manifestations. You go somewhere and a servant of God prays for you, or, or someone prays for you, and maybe you don't vibrate, maybe you don't shake, maybe you don't fall. You, uh, you can easily begin thinking that, oh, this prayer was not powerful enough. Oh, this anointing, this man is not anointed, or this woman is not anointed enough. I need to go somewhere where, where when they pray and they just uh, shake their hands, people fall down, people start screaming and all that and all that. Which is not bad. The Spirit of God manifests in so many ways. But then the problem is we might focus so much on the physical manifestation, forgetting that there is something that goes on inside that uh, people will experience transformation even from inside, even if there is no uh, 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 physical man manifestation at the beginning. But then uh, because the enemy understands that Human beings really want physical manifestations. They really want to see signs and wonders. They really want to see uh, people doing physically extraordinary things. So the enemy, the devil, the antichrist, the lawless man, will want to use that as a loophole to convince as many as possible. In fact, including the chosen ones, including the elect. And this, uh, Jesus Christ talked about it in Matthew chapter number 24, uh, verse 24 and verse 25. Uh, Jesus Christ himself says, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time, praise the Lord. Here, Jesus forewarned that because there will be a hunger, a hunger and a zeal and a yearning for physical manifestations, for signs and wonders, for miracles. And because the enemy knows that secret, he will use every other way to use dark powers and counterfeit powers so that miracles may happen. And when miracles happen, he knows that he will have won many to his side. 
Because people want things to happen miraculously. People want to get pieces of land miraculously. People do not want to work to get whether cars, whether what, even material wealth. They do not want to work. They want to get things miraculously. Tell them that kuna daktari hapa, daktari anatibu siasa, daktari anatibu eh, 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 mwanamke kutoroka, daktari anatibu eh, eh, bahati, sijui unatibu aje bahati. Lakini ukienda mahali kama hapo, those are places where people will want to crowd. Why? Because they want those miracles, eh, dead or alive. They want those miracles. And this is the strategy that the enemy will use even towards and into the great tribulation to perform signs and wonders, to perform miracles so as to convince many. It is not every miracle, it is not every sign or wonder that comes from the Lord or that is driven by truth. Instead, uh, uh, those that are not of God, they are driven by lies and deception. And the purpose is to deceive and to win as many as possible. Uh, the target is that the enemy may steal, as, as Jesus said in John chapter number 10, verse 10a, that uh, the enemy comes, uh, his mission uh, is to, uh, is he comes as a thief and he comes uh, only to steal and kill and destroy. So even those miracles, those signs, those wonders that will happen uh, as a result of the foundation of deception and lies, their, their target is to steal, to kill, and destroy. This is the warning that the word of God is giving us uh, through the servant of God, Apostle Paul. And he says that the intention uh, the, the intention is that they, uh, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. And so them that refuse to love the truth, them that refuse the truth, and the truth here is Jesus Christ. The truth here is the Son of God. So them that refuse to believe the truth, them that want to believe lies, ah, I can tell you, people love being lied to. Watu wanapenda kudanganyo. Wana Yesu asifiwe. Ukiambia mtu kweli, anaona kama haya maneno sio matamu. Lakini anataka umdanganya moja mbili tatu, di anaona haya mambo ni matamu. Hata wakati ambapo muna piga story. Mtu akipiga story akieleza ukweli, ah hii story haiko interesting. Lakini kuna yule ambaye anaongea kichanganya ndani uongo kidogo hapa na pale. Mnaona eh hey, hey, hey. hii story ndio ya kusikiza. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And so lies tend to be sweeter than truth. And that's why you, we talk about the bitter truth that people do not want to listen to the truth. They do not want to embrace the truth. They persistently refuse and reject the truth. These are the people whose uh, uh, these are the people who are being prepared for this kind of tribulation and for this kind of, of lies and deception because their hearts are so attractive to lies and deception. Even in the normal world, utapata uke kwa mfano sasa hivi ukijaribu kufanya research fanya research kwa wanaume ambao wameoa na uh, wengi sana ukimuuliza ulifaulu namna gani kuoana na huyu dada atakwambia nilimdanganya hivi nilimdanganya hivi kwa hivyo kuna jinsi ambavyo wanadamu wanapenda uongo na unaweza pata huyo dada aliacha yule aliyemwambia ukweli akaenda yule aliyemdanganya aliyemdanganya kwamba wajua kwetu e, tuko na shamba wajua kwetu e, e, mashamba ni mengi hata tutakugawia moja tutaandika shamba moja kwa jina lako e, ukienda kule unapata kumbe wamewekwa na shosho yao e, na anadanganya kwamba wako na mashamba Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo uongo huo unaonekana ni mtamu 
na kuna jinsi ambavyo mwanadamu anasikia utamu fulani kwa kimwili wakati anadanganywa na hii siri ndio huyu mpinga Kristo anaelewa sana anajua ya kwamba akitumia uongo wengi watadanganyika hizo ishara na maajabu ambazo wengi wanatafuta adui anajua ataleta zile bandia zile gushi and you will be able to steal many and when he steal he does not leave it at that point he steal and kills he will steal what god has put in you he will steal the truth that god has put in you he will steal the light that you have and make sure that he kills your spiritual life and after killing your spiritual life he destroys you and that is the target that is the mission that the lawless one has he wants to accomplish that and through deception through wickedness by doing spectacular mighty signs and wonders miracles only but to deceive even the elect as Jesus Christ himself warned as we have seen in Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 24 now in verse number 10 uh, sorry verse number 11 Uh, and so what you should mark is that uh, those people who reject the truth those people who do not love the truth those people who do not love being told the truth and the truth is Jesus the truth is the word of god those are the people that are candidates of these kinds of deceptions and lies you remember the way paul told timothy about uh, uh, the end times that uh, people will have tickling ears Uh, ears uh, that their ears will be tickling eh watakuwa na masikio ya kutekenya anataka asikie mambo ambayo yanamfurahisha na haya ambayo yanamfurahisha ni mambo ambayo hayako founded on the word of god these are people who are candidates for this kind of deception and wickedness kwa sababu mtu ana njaa sana ya kudanganywa itabidi adanganywe kwa sababu mtu ako na njaa na kiu sana ya kusikia uongo bila shaka adui ata manufacture uongo na hatimaye huo uongo ndio utakaoleta uharibifu because the target is that them that do not uh, believe or them that refuse the truth will will not be saved but perish praise the lord as number 11 for this reason god sends them a powerful delusion that they will believe the lie i'll join just by with verse number 12 and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness for this reason god sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in uh, in wickedness now this delusion uh, what is delusion delusion is deception delusion is are uh, uh, creating a misleading mind uh, misleading people uh, unatumia uh, unafanya ujanja na watu and so it is a powerful delusion now this is very interesting this delusion we we have seen about the antichrist the lawless one we have seen about him but then someone could ask themselves where will be god Mungu atakuwa wapi na Mungu venye anatupenda na Mungu jinsi ambavyo uh, yeye hapendi watu wake wakinyanyaswa but we have gotten part of the answer in the in verse number 10 that it time will have run out of sympathizing and having mercy on them that reject the truth the grace period of accepting the truth will have gone The spirit of God will now just be watching. And the lawless one will be in control during that uh, time, during those end times. And so in that dispensation, the interesting thing is the apostle says God sends them a powerful delusion. God himself will send This means that God himself is in control of the lawless one. As we have we already said that the devil cannot do uh, any harm 
without asking permission, especially on the people of God, especially uh, uh, as far as the territory of God is concerned. He cannot do anything. Remember when Peter, uh, when Jesus talk, was talking to Peter, hmm? uh, the Bible says, Jesus said that I've seen uh, Satan uh, uh, has asked for permission to sift you. So you see the enemy, Satan asks for permission. And now in this, in this particular context, God in the end times during the great tribulation, he will allow, he will allow the lawless one. He will allow the antichrist. And he will even have his hand in it. How? By sending a powerful delusion. Why? So that they will believe the lie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It will be such a great test. Ya kwamba ni kana kwamba sasa unapigana na Mungu mwenyewe. Maana Mungu mwenyewe ndiye anatumanisha hiyo delusion, hiyo hiyo roho ambayo inaleta udanganyifu. Mungu ataruhusu ikwepo. Somebody could be wondering, are we, are we really reading the Bible? Yes. It comes to a point when God sees that people are persistently rejecting the truth, loving lies, loving deception. He gives them over to their desires, as the book of Romans says. He gives people to their desires. When people have refused to listen to the conscience, and the conscience is seared. When people have rejected to listen to the truth, or they have heard the truth, but they do not want to, to go by the truth. When people have rejected and, and loved things that are against the Lord, this is what, wh where it ends. That God allows, he gives you over to your desires. And he allows even the spirit of delusion to mislead you. Remember, this is the same God that we say is the loving God. But it comes to a time when that grace period is no longer there. And so we have seen when he says that God himself will send a powerful delusion, not just a delusion, a powerful delusion. Oh, for our Kiswahili brothers and sisters, I think I should read this uh, in Kiswahili so that we may get it clearly for our brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the Swahili brothers and sisters. Wa Thessalonike wapili, mlango wapili, mstari wa kuminamoja. Biblia nasema, Kwa hiyo mungu awaletea nguvu ya upotevu wa uamini uongo ili wahukumiwe what ambao hawakuiamini kweli bali walikuwa wakijifurahisha katika udhalimu kwa hiyo Mungu awaletea nguvu ya upotevu <laughs> Bwana Yesu asifiwe God himself releasing that power of delusion so that people may be misled and this there remember it is now during uh, the great tribulation that God will no longer be interested with trying to save people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He will no longer be interested with trying to have mercy on people. Why? Because the grace period will have, the door of grace will have been shut. Praise the Lord. Yes, there will come a time during the great tribulation that door of grace, that window of grace will have been shut. And God himself will send a powerful delusion. He will send a powerful delusion which will work in tandem with a, uh, with a lawless man to unleash wickedness, deception, and lies to the people. And remember, to all that will be in the earth at that particular time. It is not a time to look towards so. It is a time to say, God, when rapture comes, I don't want to be left. Praise the Lord. Help me, prepare me, O oh God. So that when the door of grace will have been shut, I will, I will be in another arena. I'll be with you, Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. And so you see that the hand of God will be in that. And so this will be a form of punishment already. The great tribulation will be also a form of punishment before the eternal punishment. Uh, because when God now decides to shut his ears, that he can no longer listen to, uh, to cries of mercy and all that, then this will be a form of punishment. To who? To them that will have refused, them that refuse to love the truth and instead they reject salvation. It is a powerful deception that will make people believe lies because of delighting in wickedness. Hallelujah. And one thing you should understand, when here God is talking about uh, that he will send a powerful delusion, he is not joking. And this is not the first time, only that that time it will be a great one, a great tribulation. But this is not the first time. You remember in Exodus chapter number 9, when, when uh, Moses was to save the children of Israel and lead them out of Egypt, what did God do? Yes, God knew that he had wanted these children of Israel to leave Egypt. But then, he himself hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Himself. This means that God, when he wants you destroyed, he can decide to harden your heart. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let us not be persistent in rejecting the truth to an extent that God now declares you his enemy and he tells you that now we want to contend. Let's see. Exodus chapter number 9 verse 12. The Bible says, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron just as the Lord had said to Moses. Moses and Aaron were the carriers of the truth, but Pharaoh had rejected. And because of his persistent rejection of the truth, now God decided, I will maximally harden your heart. In other words, I will make you live a lie of yourself. Praise the Lord. I'll make you convinced and lie to yourself that you can fight against God, yet you cannot. This is God himself, the God our Father, him that we call the God of mercy, and indeed he is a God of mercy. But there comes a time when the door of mercy is shut, especially when one's heart is persistently rejecting salvation, persistently rejecting to love the truth, persistently loving deception and lies. Let us not fall into this trap. So that's one, one example. Another example of how God just uh, allows people to be misled because they have become so difficult and be, uh, because he wants them condemned and uh, he wants them uh, to be judged. As per verse number 12, the, the, uh, the example is with King Ahab. King Ahab in 1st Kings chapter number 22. 1st Kings chapter number 22. Verse 18 to 23. God allowed the spirit of deception to go against King Ahab. I wish you had time you read the whole of that chapter. Huu ni mkutano uliandaliwa mbinguni mahali ambapo kuna utakatifu mahali ambapo ni kutembea kwa fedha kwa the, kwa dhahabu mahali hakuna dhambi mahali kuna usafi lakini kwa sababu kuna mfalme amefanya moyo wake kwa mgumu mfalme aitwa Ahab amekataa kusikiza sauti za manabii ambao wanatumwa na Mungu amekataa kusikiza ukweli ambao Mungu mwenyewe anatumanisha Mungu akaamua atafanya nini? I really wished that we could take more time here and that's why we are just doing those few verses. But so that we may understand that the same God that we normally call and and he shows mercy. The same God that has been showing mercy, he also has got the other side when it comes to judgment. First Kings chapter number 22. 
Let me read from verse number 18 to 23, but uh, you can read the whole of that part. It's interesting, but very, very uh, serious. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? Oh my God. Now God has turned against the king of his people, the king of his chosen land, called Ahab. Why? Because Ahab persistently rejected the truth, persistently rejected the salvation of God. The Bible continues and says, one suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. Verse number 22. By what means? The Lord asked. And now the spirit now wants to answer. He answers, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He said, you will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has dis decreed disaster for you. Ha. Praise the Lord. Oh, I will read this verse again and again. I will read this portion again and again. Yani, there is a committee in heaven. I'm saying this so that we may be able to understand. We may be able to understand that there comes a time when God decides I will harden his heart. I will even send a deceiving spirit so that he may believe lies. Why? Because I want him to now to meet disaster. He is now beyond mercy. He is now a candidate of judgment. And this is what the Lord did against the king of Israel. He called a committee. All the hosts and the angels of heaven surrounded him. And he decides to give them an opportunity to say how they are going to entice King Ahab. This is a discussion going on in heaven. My friend, what is the discussion in heaven about you? Ask yourself, what is the discussion in heaven about you? Is the discussion in heaven about you like that of Job where God was discussing and he was talking about Job and giving a good testimony. Was the discussion in heaven like that when God is talking about, about Abraham being his friend? Was the discussion in heaven like that of Moses when he talks about Moses and he tells the people that Moses, I talk to him face to face, yet you others I talk to you through dreams? What is the discussion in heaven about you, brother? What is the discussion in heaven about you, sister? Here the discussion in heaven about Ahab was that who would go and entice him. Remember, it is not the devil initiating this process. God, the Lord God Almighty himself. And the word Lord here is written in capital letters. So it is Jehovah God himself initiating a process of enticing a king who has decided to rebel. No wonder the Bible says that rebellion is just as witchcraft. And God abhors, he hates rebellion. And so when we rebel, God can go to any extent. In this, in this particular context, God went to the extent of sending a spirit, a deceiving spirit, brothers. I don't know if you are seeing the gravity of this. And he sent a deceiving spirit into the mouth of all the prophets of Ahab so that they could lie to him. 
He had rejected the prophecy of Micaiah and even he slapped him. He rejected. He showed contempt against the voice of the Lord because the prophet was the voice of the Lord. He actually did not just slap Micaiah, prophet Micaiah. He slapped God himself. How can you slap God when you reject truth? When you reject rebellion, it's like you are slapping God in the face. Praise the Lord. This is why God is going to an extent. Because someone could be asking themselves from the verse that we read, read in verse 11 and 12, why would God allow Antichrist, the Antichrist to come and not just the Antichrist, the lawless man to come? He will in fact add his hand in it by sending a powerful delusion. It is because he's sending this powerful delusion to people who have rejected the truth and not just rejected the truth but slapped God in the face. Praise the Lord. Yes, this is why it is going to be a tough one. Just like the way God says that he who touches the orphans, he who touches his people, it's like he's touching the apple of his eye. You can't touch God in his eye and expect that he will be there and just say mercy. There is a limit, brethren. There is a limit for this merciful God. There is a limit. And in Romans, uh, he says, that he shows mercy to him he pleases and he hardens the hearts of them that he wants to harden. Just the way he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. I pray that the Lord may help us so that we may not harden our hearts because the more we harden our hearts, God will come and surely make that heart hard. And when he makes it hard, he even sends an enticing spirit. He even sends a heart, a, a, a deceiving spirit. He sends powerful delusion. This is what God will do in the end times. That he will send that powerful delusion. So that them that have rejected the truth will face judgment. They will be destroyed. Just like Ahab rejected the truth and God spelled destruction. He spelled disaster. Just as he has said in verse number 23 of 1 Kings chapter number 22 verse 18. That so now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. You might be walking around and you think you have escaped with conning God. You have escaped with slapping God in the face. You have escaped with deceiving. You don't know. Maybe you graduated and now God has allowed you to go to that extent and even hardened your heart more. Sasa hivi unaweza pata kuna wale ambao wanaweza kuwa wanajiita watumishi wa Mungu. Lakini ule ujanja wanafanya wamefika mahali mpaka ni vitu ambavyo vinaonekana. Mpaka imefika mahali sasa imekuwa ni kama ni jambo la kawaida. Chunga sana. Yawezekana kwamba Mungu amefanya moyo wako kuwa kama farao. Ya kwamba hata wale wa dunia wakisema kwamba huyu mtu hafanyi mambo ya Mungu, haushtuki. Instead you answer back. Let me tell you. The end is destructive. It is better you hear this voice before the great tribulation comes and return to the Lord. Change your ways. Begin loving the truth. Begin loving salvation so that you may be saved. Otherwise, there is such a great disaster. Otherwise, God is capable of releasing you to your desires. Otherwise, God is capable of releasing a deceiving spirit that will deceive you 
so that you think I am okay, I am I'm okay, I am okay. Yet you are headed for destruction. Waswahili wakasema sikio la kufa hali siki dawa. Wakati mwingine inazafika mahali Mungu atakufanya uwe sikio la kufa. Hata ukirekebishwa haurekebiki. Unachukia ukweli. Ukisikia mahali ukweli upo unaufinya. Unauua. Acha nikutangazie ya kwamba Mungu aliye juu mbinguni hufika wakati fulani na mlango wa neema unafungwa. Tulikuwa tunaimba na hata sasa tunaimba neema 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 imefunguliwa neema 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 imefunguliwa neema imefunguliwa lakini kuna wakati wimbo utakuwa neema imefungwa wakati wa utungu mkuu wakati wa uchungu na mateso makali lakini yatawajia wale waliokataa ukweli waliokataa neema walioitusi neema waliotembea katika majivuno na majigambo na maringo kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu na kiburi kilichoinuka na kumkana Mungu bali wakamkumbatia yule mwofu wakakumbatia udanganyifu na kama vile tumeshasema ni kwamba kumbuka ya kwamba sio kila muujiza ujao ni wa kutoka kwa Mungu Aduyo ataka kutumia hiyo miujiza ambayo ni bandia ili kukupotosha maana Mungu ana uwezo wa kuachilia roho ya upotovu ili upotoke Omba sana Mungu ambia Mungu Mungu ni rehemu ili kwamba nisiwe sikio la kufa niwe ni sikio la kushikia nisikie dawa ya mbinguni dawa ya neno lako dawa ya wokovu dawa ya ukweli wa Yesu Kristo Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo wewe ambao wapenda kufanya mzaha, kuna wakati tumeongea kuhusiana na moto ujao. Na tukasema kuna wale wanasema wao wanafanya mzao wanasema kwamba uh, uh, tutakuwa wengi katika huo moto kwa hivyo tutaenda tu haja ndogo sisi katika huo moto na huo moto utazima. Ndugu yangu unajidanganya. Wajidanganya kwa sababu hiyo hiyo barabara ulioichukua unapoongea hivyo ni roho ya udanganyifu sasa inachukua usukani. Na mwisho hautakuwa mzuri. Kwa hivyo iwapo uko pale na ulikuwa umefika katika kiwango hautaki kuambiwa na mtu yote. You had gotten to a point that you are so resistant to the truth that you really hated the truth that you did not want to be saved. But you realize that there is an end to it. The spirit of deception that you've been operating under There is a possibility that God has allowed that spirit to operate in you. But because this word is coming to you, there is hope. Before the great tribulation comes, you can change your life. You can accept Jesus Christ. You can accept this truth and love this truth so that you may be saved. You can change your way. It doesn't matter. You could have announced to people that you are an atheist. Unaweza kuwa hata ulimtushi Mungu. Unaweza kuwa hata uligairi mambo ya Mungu. Ukayaasi, ukalaani watu wa Mungu. Ukalaani neno la Mungu. Bado mlango wa neema umefunguliwa. Sasa hivi iwapo Mungu haja kuondoa uhai, you still got an opportunity for grace. The door of grace is still open. Make haste before the door of grace gets shut before the door of the ark like the noah's ark is shut because just the way the noah's ark was shut and the key was nowhere to be seen for sure the same same god that shut the ark and allowed the animals that some of them did not understand what was happening he allowed all human beings including the young babies the bible does not say that the babies were spared no the bible does not say that the underage was spared during noah's time no the bible does not say that maybe them that were disabled they were spared because they could not reach the ark of the covenant no 
The Bible does not say that maybe because uh, there were some girls who were weak that day, maybe there were some people who were sick that day, and so Mungu akawaurumia wakimbia waingia katika safina. No! The Bible says when the time of grace had come, it had been uh, the time of preaching had come to an end. The time of grace had come to an end. And it was time for God to destroy the people of the world. The Bible says he shut the door. And when people ran to know they were crying for help, he told them that, yes, the door is shut. And I do not have the key. The key is with the Lord. That is the door of grace. It had been shut. My brother, as much as you are saying there is much grace, there is abundant grace, you can do anything. There is a coming a time when that grace, that door of grace will be shut. Just like Noah's ark. And there will be destruction. Brother, run to Jesus before the door of the ark is shut. And the Bible says, just like those days, hata wakati wakuja Yesu Christo, Watu watakuwa wanahubiriwa na wengine wanaendelea na shughuli zao. But do not harden your heart. Do not allow the door of grace to be shut before you get into the ark. Get into the ark because God is serious about this. Yes, God is serious. He comes to a place where masses are shut. I pray that you may soften your heart. You are not born again. And you like to get born again. Say Lord Jesus. I come before you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me Jesus. I had hardened my heart. But Lord. Forgive me. And transform my heart. To be that heart of flesh. And not of stone. Sanctify me. And wash me Lord. From today. I receive you Jesus. I will love the truth. And let the truth save me. Remove my name from the book of death. And write it in the book of life. From today I am born again. In Jesus name. Amen. Father I thank you. For the brother and sister that have just received you, Lord. Father, I pray that, Lord, you may help him and her. That, Lord, they may be able to pursue and embrace the truth. This truth that will save them to the end. Protect them, my Father, from the deceiving spirits of this world. Protect them, my Father, and protect us even as a church in the name of Jesus. As a church of Christ. As the body of Christ in the nation of Kenya. Because there has been deception, freight, life, and, and center from all over, up and down. Deception has been announced and it has become like a norm. Lord, I pray that you may forgive us. Open our eyes and understanding that we may understand the gravity. We may understand the anger that you, will, you unleash on rebellious hearts. Forgive us, Lord. I pray that Jehovah may enable us to be sensitive and to watch so that we may not miss so that we may not be time barred, even when the time comes for the door of grace being shut. Help us, Lord, that we may not face destruction. Help us not that we, Lord, that we may not be candidates of this lawless man who will come to deceive and destroy people. Help us that we may follow you, the true shepherd, and not follow the voice of the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We want to be alive Live on earth and alive in you, Christ Jesus. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. I pray for them that are unwell, Lord. Give them good health. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Them that are distressed, them that are depressed because of rejecting the truth and because of different issues in life. I pray for your deliverance in the name of Jesus. I pray for your healing. Enable us, Lord. 
we just surrender to you, Lord. Help us on our own. We cannot make it, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit, for us to walk in holiness, for us to walk in righteousness, for us to be awake and alert and be on watch every other minute and time and second because you are coming like a thief and Lord God that no one knows the hour, no one knows the minute, the day, but you only, O oh God Almighty, the Father, the maker of heaven and earth. Father, help us that we may be on watch in the name of Jesus. You who watches over Jerusalem, you never slumber. Help us that we may never slumber, but be on watch in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you also for this altar, for this ministry. I pray that you may expand it in the name of Jesus. I pray that this voice of your word, the voice to the nation, shall reach many in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise and honor. Cover us against any counterattacks in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for joining us. You who, have, who has uh, confessed Jesus Christ as your personal savior, please get in touch with us. Inbox us. There are numbers running down there on that screen. Please do not hesitate from calling us, from inboxing us, from SMSing, and uh, uh, the Lord God will be with you. You have been born again. Please join us on Sunday uh, uh, from 9 uh, we have got the first service and from 11.30 we have got the second service and we pray that the Lord God will minister to you even through his servant, uh, Bishop Dr. Fidelis Oboge. And on Tuesday we are here praying uh, starting from 6. On Wednesday we are worshipping God in the worship service, in the praise and worship service on Wednesday right from uh, uh, 5.30. So please continue joining us. Also, you can join us physically at Covenant Renewal Altar Church in Santon, Kasarani. Uh, from town, you board vehicle number 17B and you come on Kasarani Miki Road at a place called Stage Yamafuta. You take Police Road, 4th Street on your right. We are located right there. And if you are uh, in other parts of the, uh, the country, please you can join us at Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry Church at Mamboleo in Kisumu, in Kajado. There are branches there. If you are along Kangundo Road, we have got also a church there. Uh, and God will bless you. And in Magadi, we have got a branch there. So please join us, whether physically or on the, on the uh, YouTube and Facebook. We thank you so much. And from Covenant in your altar ministry, we do love you so much. God bless you. Shalom. Eva, Eva.